always a pleasure to your FX coming at you on the Friday here. Uh, after the Thursday, BOE, ECB, BOE, unanimously dovish, uh, ECB, jury's out, whether she's being honest or whether she has the, uh, the guts to continue uh, raising rates. Anyway, let's, let's have a look here. Some interesting things happened yesterday. Um, this is the Euro Swiss chart. We drew this line the other day. Uh, weirdly, that was the exact low yesterday, 99.35. Um, accumulating Euro Swiss is less a good idea with Euro dollar looking as if it may turn, but it's it's hard to it's hard to figure this now. So it's just less conviction on this. Um, take the euro dollar chart obviously we made uh, the 110 20 29 highs or sorry 110 17 yeah 110 32 well, almost 110 33 highs 100 points 103 points from the break but then during the uh, press conference she just couldn't get it together she, a bunch of silly words strung together that really were hard to understand that meant kind of nothing to any of us um, and so we kind of tumbled down touching basically the low of the fed bar which is one um, 108.89 then the fix came gm just back up to about 40 and then we had some late day selling in equities, I guess, which drove us back down. So it's unclear what to do with this. Obviously, if non farms comes in a super low one and US rates plummet, uh, it seems hard to believe. Euro dollar may, may head higher. Um, but if we come in as a heater and then we get this uh, correlation trade, which is which I thought may break this in the last three days, but it clearly hasn't. Um, if equities tumble and U.S. rates go higher, um, euro is going to go lower. So there's no trade here. I don't really understand what's going on. Like, you know, there's two ways of looking at it. We've come from 94. 94 all the way to 110 so it's basically 20 percent move big move in currencies not much of a pullback anywhere are we ready for some sideways action and some pullback are we going to test these 10802 lows kind of looks like we are uh, but there's just not enough evidence on the table there's not a strong enough technical setup i mean i guess you could technically look at this and say all right below 86 we can probably get short but Pre non farms, we're not looking for tons of momentum here. Um, so we're just going to stand down. Not much to do. If the gold chart's worth looking at, bang, this thing got fucking harangued. Banana splits, one banana, two banana, three banana, four. Um, wow, that's a big move in gold. It's bearish engulfing. Um, this lends credibility to euro lower, right? Uh, but again, heading into non-farms, what are you going to do? And how are you going to trade this? Are you going to sell this through the lows as conf a confirmation of this bar? Are you going to sell this at the 50% retracement, which is probably at the top of my head, just eyeballing this, 1930? Uh, how are you going to trade this and create a good risk-reward? Tricky, but a powerful bar there that uh, gold got hammered. Uh, and for, you know, why? Why did gold get hammered? I don't know. I guess, I mean, the market's long. But there's plenty of hammering. Like, check this bar out here on Monday, December 5th. Gold got hammered, bearish engulfing. Never made a new low, straight higher. Check this one right here, December 15th. Gold got hammered, straight higher. Um, so it's not as straightforward as it looks, but it's just an interesting bar. And I guess you could argue that below uh, 1902, then it's really confirmation that gold's going to take a little whoopsie day, whoopsie daisy on the downside. I don't want to blather on before non-farms because we're really going to take a, uh, 
a much deeper look at these charts at 1 p.m. as we're going into the numbers. We also have ISM today. Let's look at these futures. You know, we're dicking around here at the 200 day, 33, let's call it 3, 336. We went down to 333 and a half. I think that you need to wait. This looks like to me that this has a little more of a puke. All of the data and all of the you know information that I get are talking about like massive, massive positions from the institutional community short um, ten years. Um, that's never a great sign uh, for a change in trend. What you kind of want is a puke um, before you get a change in trend. Although data is data, and bonds are definitely more data-driven than, say, currencies, which are a little bit more um, psychologically driven. Data, but also with a very powerful psychological overlay as currencies. Anyway, let's look at equities. Um, got short yesterday, and then someone bought a shit ton of VIX, and we got this big red bar, this big red hourly bar, which was neat. Uh, and then we had some pretty good volatility. Uh, we did okay here. We were trading around it. We weren't being too greedy. You know, we're not trying to like grab 10% in the S&Ps. We're trying to grab a percent, right? So, um, you know, the stuff that we sold in the 90s, uh, we bought back in the 60s and we resold some 80s and we still have about 10% of the position on uh, at a very nice average core short, and we will fade, um, you know, this sort of 4,200 level again today. Um, it's dicey, right? Because <clears throat> yesterday at one point it looked so bullish. I was like, Jesus Christ, what are you doing here, Bobby? But, um, you know, you, you, like we said, going into these three days of data, you just have to trade the levels. You know, you have your stop, you have your take profit, you have your strategy. Um, you're not trading a story here, you're trading a level. Uh, and you just have to respect that. And in one sense, we got lucky because it was bid to the boots, went even a little bit further than I thought it was going to go. Um, but we didn't get stopped, so that was kind of, I guess, lucky. Is it lucky? Is it good? I don't even know, nor do I care. We just bank the money and move on. Um, anyway, I'm saying a lot, but there's nothing to say here. Crude still getting slapped. Uh, I just remind myself that we, we we were very very strong sellers at on the 82 handle. Um, those 82 90s. That's a lonely fucking offer up there right now. Seven bucks, ten percent lower. Not that we would have harvested 10%, but anyway, silly. Again, not much to do here uh, at the moment. We're short a little bit of stocks, um, and we're watching this gold for like, just for directional purposes. We're not going to trade gold. But if gold continues to collapse, um, then we might get involved in some euro trades. Let's quickly look at cable. Uh, which was so pretty messy, right? Um, 122.60 was important, then the fix took us all the way back. Let's go. So 122.60 lows. So then this bar here, which was pre-fix, 4 o'clock bar, we, we went down to 40, but then we went all the way back up to 98, and then back down through 60 again. We never saw it again. This is kind of your bull bear um, number, 122.60. I actually don't think we're going to see it. Cable looks awful. Um, the BOE didn't like give. They didn't like give confidence to like we have this under control. Um, so I think cable could go a lot lower. Uh, and then we talked about: is this a double top or is this a break trade? It's always going to be a break trade if it gets up there. There's like there's no harm in having a one. 124.50 stop on the top side, uh, but the neckline here is 118.38. Are we going to see that? Hmm. 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 Maybe. 
it's a big call at 122.14, and we're not prone to make these sort of 500 pip calls. We trade things day to day, week to week, but uh, things that make you go, hmm, that's a bearish engulfing bar as well, very much like the uh, gold bar. Anyway, sit tight this morning. We have some PMIs coming out of Europe. Uh, we're not going to trade any of this. Have a, a good look at your strategy and see where things are trading and a good look at your strategy just before non-farms. We're going to have a good three hours of fun, 2.30 to 5.30. Uh, Swiss, Central European time. And then uh, off to the weekend. Good luck out there, people. I will talk to you on Monday.